What do you think of Jordan Peterson? Uh, did you see the video about where he said, I can't do it? No, I haven't. Well, it, it's a video. It's on, it's on YouTube now. Yeah. But uh, uh, he's giving a talk in New York. A man stands up and he starts talking about Solzhenitsyn's book, 200 Years Together. Yeah. Uh, and Jordan gets kind of a, 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 a pained look on his face. And then he, the man uh, switches to the Holodomor, the uh, starving to death of millions of Ukrainians, mm -hmm. uh, and asked, uh, which was done by uh, a man by the name of Lazar Kaganovich, one of Stalin's Jewish henchmen. Uh, and uh, so he asked Jordan Peterson, what is your take on this? Have you read Solzhenitsyn's book? So, so, so Peterson looks at him. He's got like this look of the deer in the headlights. Mm. Then he walks off to the other end of the stage. Now he looks like Hamlet, kind of agonizing with his, his hand on his forehead. Then he walks back and he's ready to say something. And then he says, I can't do it. Right. And that's it. And discussion. So this is this is happening around the same time that uh, David Brooks has written an article uh, called the Dave, the Jordan Peterson moment, yeah. where he's basically anointing Jordan Peterson as Mister Anti Political Correctness. You know, yeah. standing up anybody who says anything in Canada against, uh, gender against transgenderism or gender ideology is immediately proclaimed a hero. Yeah. And I don't want to take any credit away from him for doing that, but I mean, there are certain topics where that he simply will not, or can, no, he cannot, cannot bring himself to address. Yeah, yeah. I I, I was listening to him the other day, and, and uh, he does talk about logos as the uh, sort of cornerstone of Western civilization. I, I thought that that was particularly interesting, but but his his understanding of it or his conceptualizing of it was was quite limited, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I detect elements of Nietzsche. I detect elements of social Darwinism. When he talks yeah. about Jews, he invariably talks about their high IQs. So it's, we're back to this kind of uh, uh, crypto-racial argument here. Yeah. And, and people who don't like Jews are basically envious of their success. I mean, this is the story that he's saying. That's needless to say, that's not the story that I've been telling. That's not the story of the Jewish revolutionary spirit, yeah. which is based on an understanding of Logos. And the whole point of that book is that basically when the Jews uh, uh, turned on Christ uh, and called for his crucifixion, they, uh, they killed the Logos incarnate. And once they did that, they became rebellious against Logos. And when you're rebellious against Logos, which is also the order of the universe, including the social order, you become a revolutionary. And I'm saying that's been their identity for 2,000 years now. That revolutionary spirit is transmitted via uh, primarily the Talmud. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask you was if, you know, that, that, that kind of explains the, the sort of subversion for, for a long, for, for the, the main stretch of history. But when you, when you come up to today and where, uh, you know, most Jews like Christians grew up in essentially secularized environments, you know, they offer that they, they don't believe in God, they don't go to synagogue, etc. How, how is that Talmudic uh, ideology transmitted? Well, it, it comes through concepts like tikkun olam, right. which is basically their notion that, uh, that the Jews' mission is to heal the world, okay? And then that gets transmuted into messianic politics or messianic political movements, like Bolshevism, for example. The Jews were very much in favor of Bolshevism when it came out because they thought it was going to change the world for the better. Well, the, 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 the Jewish mind... Uh, the Jewish revolutionary spirit is constantly coming up with new forms of messianic politics throughout history. So uh, just most recently, it just goes from, okay, now it's feminism. Well, feminism, it sounds a lot like uh, Marx's culture, uh, class conflict transposed to the, to the sexual realm, yeah. okay? Uh, if you say that, or if I say that, I'm called an anti-Semite, Okay. If the Jew says it, well, that's great because that's, yeah, of course that's what we're doing. We're trying to heal the world. Mm -hmm. So you have, what you have now is this colossal double standard here. So the one of the latest manifestations of the Jewish revolutionary spirit was gay marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody knows it was a Jewish creation. 
The Jew, Joe Biden said it. The vice president of the United States said the Jews were behind gay marriage, and everybody cheered when he said it. And then Amy Dean in Tikkun Magazine, which is Tikkun Olam, okay, that's the concept I'm talking about here, mm. says if it weren't for Jews, there would be no gay marriage. Well, when I say that, they call me an anti-Semite. This, this is just an intolerable double standard, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, I'm bringing it up because these are all manifestations of the same revolutionary spirit in some form of messianic politics. Where the Jews have an addiction to it. They, they just can't break it. Uh, do, you, do you see that in Silicon Valley, in uh, you know, almost this kind of idolatry of technology, you know, Zuckerberg talking about making a better world and, and Google and, and all of that? Yeah, sure. Sure, that's exactly what they're, what they're trying to do. They, everything they, by the fact that the Jew does it, it is going to heal the world. <laughs> I mean, that's obvious, you know? It's basically, by definition, anything that the Jew does is going to be something that's going to heal the world, you know? That's, that's what we're seeing here. We see it over and over and over again. And then uh, or, or they also get to demonize anybody who objects. Yeah. So, I mean, so it, it even goes like uh, Jewish comedians. I cover a lot of these Jewish comedians in the Jewish revolutionary spirit. Mm -hmm. So with the, the latest version of the Jewish comedian is Sarah Silverman. Well, she says the most outrageous kind of blasphemous stuff, uh, the most obscene stuff imaginable. And if you object, well, you're an anti-Semite. Mm -hmm. Because this is, this is progressive thought. She said, you know, she'd kill Christ again. Yeah. If she had the chance. She just said that uh, anti-abortion legislation makes her want to go out and eat a fetus. Mm -hmm. She just called uh, Jeff Sessions a cunt. I mean, she can, she can do whatever she wants, yeah. and you can't object to it. Because if you do, you're an anti-Semite. It's almost sort of pathological, isn't it? Um, but, it is pathological. Yeah, this, yeah. this lady needs counseling. Yeah. She, she's out of control. Yeah. And, and, and why is this funny? I, this this she's known as a comedian. She's a stand-up comedian. I haven't heard anything that she said that's even remotely funny. Um, do do you know you Orthodox Jews, Hasidic Jews, the more religious Jews? Do they not see that that these these mushals, that they they oppose it? Well, yeah. I mean, they do. I mean, there's a Netzerai Karta. It's a completely anti-Zionist operation that opposes the state of Israel. They're always out there demonstrating against the state of Israel. Yeah. Uh, uh, my my friend, my late friend, Rabbi Dresner, wrote a book. He's the one who got me started on uh, the pathological effect that Jews were had, Jews like Woody Allen had on our culture. It was a Jew who brought that to my attention. Wow. Uh, Ford is a Jew, a, now a Jew. He, he wasn't before, but he's the one who started talking about Jews and pornography. So, yeah, there are lots of them bring it up. They, they, the, the best, uh, I guess, description of what it's like to be a Jew was from one of Israel Shamir's books when he's he's fighting for the IDF during the 67 war and waiting for the bar artillery barrage to just obliterate them. And he realized that he's like a human shield. Mm -hmm. the, these, the, the big Jews use little Jews like Israel Shamir as a human shield to advance their agenda. It's also very apparent if you watch uh, the Cohen brothers' movie, A Serious Man, this whole split between the Jewish leadership and the Jews themselves are basically held hostage to an agenda because of their rejection of the Logos. They, they've imprisoned themselves. They've become hostages because of their rejection of the Logos.